Hello, today I'm going to show you how you can build your Asana to Google Task integration using Zapier. For instance, what I, we are going to build is an integration that whenever there is a new task in Asana and that task is assigned to you, that will show up on your Google Tasks list in a matter of seconds. There you go. The task in Google Tasks contain the name of the task, this number, which is an ID, I'm going to explain that later, and a link to the Asana task. So if you are on your phone, you can click that link and that will bring you to the Asana task directly. Okay, then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new task. Assign it to me in this other task. I'm going to rename it and let's see what happens. Yeah. Okay, the new task was created and let's see what happens with the oldest one. There you go. And now I'm going to mark this as completed. And that should mark it as completed in Asana as well. There you go. And I can do the same from Asana to the other side. So this will be marked as done as well. There you go. Hi there, I'm Andres from Connex. We are an automations and integrations agency and we can help you build this integration I'm going to show you today or integrate any of the tech stack your company, your team uses. Look the link in the description below to book a free discovery call with us. In the call, we are going to explore the feasibility of the automations you are looking to build. For this integration, we are going to build three workflows on Zapier. The first one is about new Asana tasks to create a task in Google Task. The second one will be for updated tasks in Asana to update tasks in Google Tasks as well. For example, if you change the name of the task or you assign someone else or you change the due date. The third one is a simpler one is whenever the task is marked completed in Google, then to update Asana accordingly. Let's start with new tasks. To get to this point I'm showing you here on the screen, you need first to create a Zapier account at zapier.com. You can create one for free, and then you click on this uh, orange button, create, and then a zap. This is the interface to build automations on Zapier. You can try with the Copilot, but usually I go directly here with the workflow builder. When building automations on Zapier, we usually use the formula when this happens to that, and we map those um, steps in the trigger card. When this happens, part goes into the trigger card, and then the do that goes into the action cards below. So for the automation of new tasks, we start with Asana and the trigger event is a new task in Asana. Then the most important step here is at the end is to create a task in Google. So let me show you the trigger first. Then after you select Asana as the app and then new task as the trigger event, you connect your Asana account clicking here, then you hit continue at the bottom. The configuration is pretty simple. Zapier asks you which workspace do you want to monitor and which project you want to monitor. So this gives you hint about a limitation about this workflow is that you will need one zap per each project you want to bring tasks from, okay? If you want to overcome this limit, feel free to reach out. We can find ways to overcome this single project limitation. Hit continue and then test step. What Zapier 2 does here in this test trigger step is trying to pull an existing record on Asana to show you what kind of information comes together with that record. So we get an ID for that record. Uh, we get the date it was created. We get the assignees in the ID format as well, as well as more information like the task name, the notes, the due date, other related information about the task as well. So after that, you hit continue with select the record and start building this workflow. Now let's look into the create task in Google action, how it looks like. The action, well, you need to select Google task as the app. The action event is to create a task, and then you need to log in your Google task account here. Hit continue. And this is how it looks, this setup 
of creating a task in Google Tasks. So first you need to select which list are you going to create this task in. I have two task lists, so I'm selecting this demo task list, and then um, we need to set up the title and the notes and the due on. For the title, what I'm doing is I'm mapping the name coming from Asana by clicking this plus button on the side and clicking on the name field coming from step one, which is the trigger. Then I'm doing space parentheses, and I'm bringing the ID of this Asana task into Google task as well. This is a number, a unique identifier for this task in Asana. And I'm bringing this here. You will understand later. It will help us for the next automations. In the notes, I'm putting the link to this task, and then I'm bringing the due at date as well. In this specific example, the due date was not set up, but eventually if you set this up, this will be brought over as well. Now I have three other tasks this in the middle. The first one is a filter if the assignee for this task exists. So if this task was assigned, if this task was not assigned, I don't want to bring that task over to a Google task. If you prefer otherwise, you can, you know, don't add these steps on your Zap, but um, this is helpful for me because I work with other colleagues and I don't want their task in my Google lists, right? So the first condition here is check if the task was assigned to someone. So this checks is if the assignee ID exists. Now, um, as you may see here in the task details that Zapier is able to see, the assignee, I have the ID of the assignee. I don't have his or her name or email. So for me, it's very difficult to understand if this is me or not. And what we were doing here in step three is to find that user corresponding to that ID. So I set up the app as Asana. The action event is find the user. I connect my Asana account. And then in the configuration tab, I'm giving as input the ID of the assignee. This will give me back the email and the name of the assignee. And then from here, I can put an extra filter down below to say, hey, is does this email match my email address? If yes, then I want this task in Google Task. Otherwise, stop here. So this filter looks for the email and will move forward only when the text exactly matches my email address. And that's it. This is the Zap for new tasks. Let's see the other two. OK, updated tasks. The updated task workflow is pretty similar in the first part to the new task Zap. So we have the trigger on updated tasks instead of new tasks. There you go. The configuration is pretty much the same. We need to like select the workspace and the project we need to monitor. And this is optional, but we can choose also the fields we want to trigger this off of. And here's the list of fields that we can trigger this off of. So we can trigger off of assignees uh, whenever uh, the assignee is changed or the due on date or the name of the task changes. So we can select like this, assignee, and due on date. Now, I have set this filter in a subsequent action in Zapier, but sometimes it's worth having this at the trigger level as well. So I have a filter after the trigger to move on only if the change field are due on assignee or name and the assignee exists as well as for the new task. Then I have the find user and filter on the user found as well. Now, instead of creating a task, I'm finding the task on Google first in this case. So the next action event is to find a task. And if you see in the configuration, we need to, again, select the list. But then also the search function for Google Tasks works on the title of the tasks. We cannot search for other fields like the notes section or the due on. We need to use the title. And that's why when I'm creating a new task in Google, I'm including the Asana, the Asana ID in the title as well, because this helps Zapier to find that task using the Asana ID. And from here, I am faced with three situations, and that's why we use paths in Zapier.
The first one is if the task was not found in Google Tasks, that means that the task was still not created. This is especially helpful if you um, are you start using this automation from now on moving forward. Your previous tasks will not be brought over to Google until you modify them. So I have a path for whenever that task was not found on Google, and this is how it looks like. So the condition is that the result from step five is false. It wasn't, it didn't find a task. And then also the task completed is false as well. So I want to filter those tasks that were already marked as completed in Asana. I don't want to create them again in Google. And then under this path, what I do is to create a task using the same action event as before. And again, I'm bringing a task name and the ID of that task in the title. The second situation we may find is whenever the task was found on Google Task and the task was still not marked as completed. So in this case, we want to update a task and this is how the configuration looks like. So we need to select again the list and the task Instead of selecting one from this drop down list, we will use the ID that step five, the find task action found. Okay, there is a bug here in the Zapier interface. I'm going to close this and open that again. And then, you know, the fields to map again our title, notes, and due date. So in this case, as the task is not yet marked as complete, I will mark the status as incomplete. Finally, if the task was marked as complete in Asana, I want to mark that as completed in Google Tasks as well. So what I'm doing here is updating the task and this time marking the status as complete. So those are the three situations you may find when bringing the information from Asana to Google Tasks. The last automation is the simplest one and uh, it's optional as well. So say you work outside of Asana maybe, you are uh, on the go and you need to mark a task mark as completed, you can do so on your phone, on your Google task application. And uh, we can bring this information into Asana as well. So this zap goes the other way around, goes from Google task into Asana. And the trigger is, uh, again, the app this time is Google tasks. And the trigger event is new completed task. After you connect your Google Tasks account, the configuration is unit, uh, which list you want to monitor, right? Hit continue. And this is the kind of information that comes from each task record in Google. So here in the title, we have the ID of the task. You can notice here that we have that in the notes section as well in the link. So the link to a task contain the ID of that task as well. So these two numbers are the same and uh, this will become handy in the next step. So here I want you to focus on this update task action in Asana. This is how the configuration tab looks like. So the first thing Zapier asks you, which task do you want to update? And for that, you need to bring in the ID of that task. Then it will ask you, well, what do you want to change? I leave everything as it is. The mandatory field here is the workspace. We don't need to select projects, um, that's optional, but the ID is mandatory as well. So you need to bring that ID from Google and then mark this task as complete. I mark this as true. How do we get that ID? We can use a formatter by Zapier action and uh, the action event is text. And this is how the configuration looks like. So the transformation we want to do is to split the text and I'm giving as input the permalink from the notes. The separator for this link is the slash and the segment index is the last. So we want, you know, to get that link, uh, Zapier to split the string using the slash and get the last part of the link, which contains the task ID. You may want to do this with the title as well. That works too. Uh, you would need an extra formatter step. The first to uh, remove the last paragraph um, symbol and the first to get from the beginning, depending on how you stored that number in the title in the Google tasks. And that's it. This is how you build your custom integration between Asana and the Google task. If you notice, Zapier is pretty, pretty powerful tool to build your automations the way 
you work. So you can customize this in infinite ways. Say, for example, you want to bring tasks also from your colleagues, you can do so. Or do you want to copy these tasks in some other task management tool like um, TickTick or Todoist, you can do so. Drop me a comment below telling me which task management tools do you prefer. I will create a tutorial for those as well. And if you have any other questions or got stuck or do you want us uh, help building you this for yourself, you can always um, book a free discovery call and I'm more than happy to help you understand how to automate your workflows. Cheers.